Hi everybody. I am back to my concertina here and when I come back to it after a little bit, um, I always like to do a little page through as you probably know if you've been watching these videos. Uh, so I'm just going to page through. Uh, I really like what happened with that. I think I'm going to leave it. It's interesting to me that it's darker and it feels complete. I like to do this too sometimes to look at them separately, the um, pages instead of just all together. Uh, this one also complete. Feels done. There's just a kind of a feeling that you get um, when you can't think of anything more to do and when it just feels done. And it's something that you just sort of develop over time, this ability. And I may look at these again sometime in the future. Like this one right here. I can't think of what else to do with it right now, but maybe at some point I might think of something else. But I kind of dig it the way it is now. It's got some quiet space. It's got some things going on. Um, so as you look, look at these things and develop your um, your knowing, yep, done. It's It will be easier to tell. But, um, you know, is art ever really done? I mean, this is a good question to ask yourself. I like this page, but I'm just noticing this right here. I'm That's right in the middle, and I'm not that fond of it. So I might break that up in some way as I continue to move forward. So I'm going to leave that one open so that I don't forget. This was the one I did in the last video, or, you know, could continue to work on. And I like it just as it is. It's a pretty big shift from the other ones. With It's got quite a bit more yellow, but I think that's okay because there is some of that same yellow in these previous pages. So it feels like a cohesive piece to me, so I'm going to call that one done. I'm going to fold that under and keep this other page that I think needs just a touch. This one, um, yeah, this over here needs help. So as you continue to make more art, because, you know, there is no, no um, substitute for miles and miles of canvas or paper or whatever, you will get better at determining when things are done. There's also value to overworking pieces. I've got my... Um, paint out over here so I'm going to start talking or painting as I talk. This is matte medium. I'm going to use that as a glazing fluid today because it dries a little bit quicker. Um, you'll get better as you go along. This is a new pencil that I found. It's a jumbo jet black from Jerry's Artorama. It's a sort of an oily kind of a uh, pencil and so I wanted to try it out. I haven't really used it yet. As you know, as I continue on, I'm just continuing in this direction to continue to develop pieces a little bit. So maybe what I should do is try and figure out, I feel like that needs just maybe a little bit of purple. Let's see. So here's some slightly darker purple. Let's see if that doesn't just kind of, yeah, I think that might be enough right there. Am I on camera? Yeah. I think that was just enough. There was, I felt like there was just a smile there. And so, yeah, this is that oil bar too, so I don't want to put too much paint over the top of it. But I do think that that helped quite a bit. So now I've already put things in the way over here. Another artist tip, the bigger your work surface, the more stuff you'll end up on it. And it really is, you know, if I could give you a tip, making sure that you have enough space in your work area to, um, to work on things is a big one <laughs> and I am terrible at it I have to admit okay so let's kind of do that I am going to I think add a stencil to this and I'm thinking since I like this yellow I, this is dark over here I'm going to make a lighter value of this yellow and that just in case you're curious is yellow oxide it really it makes a beautiful yellow when you uh, mix it down with some white. It's kind of not wildly yellow. I should do this with a, with a sponge instead of a brush. So it's not a bright, bright yellow, but it's still beautiful. I think it's a little bit calmer and there's a lot going on here, so I don't want to Um, make that too busy. And I kind of um, 
when I use a sponge, I try and dab a little bit of a couple of colors on so that I get a little bit of a variegated color happening underneath. And it's not important to me if I miss a spot, it doesn't have to be perfect. It also went underneath the um, thing there a little bit, that doesn't bother me. Now I've got some paint left over on this um, stencil and these next pages are not very developed. So I'm just gonna flip it over and see if some of it comes off onto the next page. And it didn't. I talked too much and it dried. That's all right. So I'm gonna keep that. Now that I've used that G, it might not be a bad idea to um, use that again at some point, but that made a difference. Now I would like to see a little bit more of that color, maybe over on this side somewhere. So let's see, and I think maybe just some kind of pattern would be good for that. So how about this one? Oh, this one's cool, okay. I've got a few little ones here that are just pattern. When I first started buying stencils, I um, bought too much, you know, really interesting stuff that really interested me. And then I realized the ones that I use all the time are just, just patterns, just, um, things that don't demand too much uh, attention on their own. So I'm going to carry that over the page to keep things integrated. And let's see, I'm going to go over that pink just a little. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Maybe a little bit more of that over here. I'm just continuing to mix more paint off to the side there. And you see, I'm not making it square. I'm just trying to make these kind of random sorts of things. And I'm flipping that over again too. And a little bit came off on that. It's um, light on light, so it doesn't show a lot, but that's okay too. So I feel now, let me let me look at this again. Uh, yeah, that, that feels good to me now, for now. These things change. I was just reflecting on this the other day. Something looks done to me and I go back to the, it the next day and I don't like it anymore or it doesn't feel done. So it seems to be a very fluid endeavor here that we're after. So I'm getting into the part of the book where things are not as developed now. Um, this page is a little, these are, and from here on out, there's just, you know, random marks. I think I was probably just cleaning brushes off or something. So this is a good spot to um, just continue to experiment, really. I like to experiment in the lower um, oh shoot, I put that right into the paint. Oh, no, not quite. Uh, I like to experiment in these um, first layers because, you know, I'm building things up and there's always room to change uh, what's happening. So I'm starting to add some gray into this mixture to see what that's going to look like. It's kind of a cool color. Let's see, maybe I can show it to you a little bit better on the against the purple. Yeah, it's sort of neutral. It's kind of intriguing. Again, just building up layers. So this is where I can really be wild. And this is where we find, uh, or we're attempting to find a way to balance our intuition with, with our thinking minds. So in the early parts, I don't, I try not to think very much at all. I try to just go with my gut and what's happening in the moment. Some more gray. And experiment and play. And it gives me something to respond to. I've got some gray, white, yellow, and the turquoise all together. And I'm going to add some matte medium into that to make it a little bit thinner and start with just bold shapes. Let's see what we can do here with some bold shapes. That's not dry enough to go over yet. So, hmm. Let's see. 
that's kind of opaque, more opaque than I thought it was going to be. So if that happens, that's all right too. Just take a ratty old rag. Oh, this one's just about done. And you can blot a little bit and you can take a tool of some kind and scratch into it. That's always fun. So my purpose with these things is not just to get directly to point A, from point A to point B, because, um, well, for one thing, in, in all the years that I've been doing art and looking at my art and trying to figure out what interests me, I, um, I realized that layers make more interesting pieces to me. And we all have different preferences on that. I do also very much like things that are um, that are calmer. So um, I build up these layers, and sometimes it gets really chaotic. And then I try and come back in and create calm from what I have done. And ooh, I just goof that up. If you go through wet paint with your Posca pens, you're probably going to destroy them. So let's see if I can find, I'm hoping that if I keep marking with this, I will get that off the tip. <laughs> let's see. Let's a bit more. I think I'm good. So one of the things that influences me too is street art and graffiti, particularly just the random markings of people that are, well, they're not random, they are definitely messages, but um, I don't know what they mean a lot of time, but I find them visually interesting. And so that is um, something that I try and bring into my art a little bit. Here, I've got some kind of light. And let's see, and then I put that right in the middle, so I need to keep <laughs> moving with that a little bit. Let's have that come across here. Maybe not cover that up completely. Over that a little bit. So just playing, moving across the page, building things up. Happen if I put some purple into this. Oh, that's pretty. So I've got one value next to the other. That's always really interesting to me, too. So, what could I, can I get a medium value somewhere in between those two as well? See if we can make a few shapes with some steps in value. That can be interesting. So this is also different opacity. So scratch through it. I like to scratch through stuff. As you can tell, I'm sure. So let's see if I can get a lighter value now. Already running out of white paint over there. So there we go, just slightly purple. Some of that white, I'm not crazy about that. And I'm going to just keep going because I don't have a lot to respond to on some of these pages yet. So just playing around. All right, so more white and just playing around with the different color combinations I can get with this limited palette. Um, restrictions like this can be very interesting. Things can get really interesting. Um, well, it kind of frees you up in a way. If you don't have to make all the choices, you can play around with um, what is in front of you, the choices that are available to you there.
lot of curve motif going on here. So what if I continued with that a little bit? Okay, so I just had an idea and these are strokes of insight, I think. So I'm going to pull this back out. I'm going to, I'm going to do something a little bit differently here. And uh, here's a spot up here. I'm going to lay down some of this yellow. Make sure it's kind of juicy. And I'm going to put a stencil over the top of it. And I'm going to probably use a piece of paper and just pull a print. But I'm going to just rub through it and see if I can't pick up paint from in between. Yeah, okay, that's cool. I'm not crazy about those edges though, so what I'm going to do, well, that's okay because something else will come along and cover that once it's dry in the next layer. So let's see, what if I took, since I'm thinking about stencils, let's just get another sponge because I dumped the last one in the water. And let's lay down some letters. And here, I've got this gray sitting right here. How about gray over the black? This is a stencil I made myself. I like to make my own stencils and collage papers and things like that, rather than using things that someone else created. I just feel like it just includes more of, um, more of me in it. In there. Oh, that's an interesting color. Okay, let's do something like and how about now I've just got um, paint on my palette that I'm going to try and use up before I take a rest after this session. So what about, let's just put that over the top of this thing too. Might as well get it on the canvas rather than just letting it dry. So how about, oh, that's cool, all right. And by using the same stencil across multiple pages, just like using the same color, it creates um, continuity. I'm just doing that same thing with the stencil, probably off camera, but over there, just to get the paint off of the stencil a little bit. Still got quite a bit on it, so there's a little bit of a smoosh there. Uh, and it, it makes the book a cohesive whole. So I use these same techniques when I'm painting on canvas. Keep things cohesive by using the same color palette, by um, using similar patterns, but also creating differences across areas. Let's see, I have pink dots in one spot. What if I made... This is kind of a cool color. Let's do something like this. So a few pages back, I had dots and I could make smaller ones with my finger. So um, using similar things, using the same things. So we want to create differences and also similarities to keep things interesting. Some bigger dots with a flatter part of my finger here. Another good reason to use gloves. I like what happens when the paint sort of begins to wear off too. You get sort of semicircles. So 
the other thing, that ended up with quite a bit of paint on the edge. Let's grab that stencil again. Let's see, here it is right here. And put that across a page and going off the page. These things are all make them more interesting, make them abstract yet graphic shapes. This is pretty wet, so it's probably going to go under the stencil, but that's okay too. Yeah, cool. And how about the same sort of thing back in here? Hoping I'm not. There's. <laughs> another table next to this one fairly close and it looks like I'm getting paint on the paper that's covering that but hopefully not smearing the surface too much all right where did I put the stencil now here it is interesting with the two colors and the, the circles of the pouncing from the stencil. Let's see. I don't know if you're familiar with the concept of a mother color. If you take, um, you decide your, on your color palette to begin with and you just, you mix all the colors that you're going to use together and it gives you a neutral that ties everything all together in a really interesting way. So in this way, you can also, I put that right on top of something else I squished down there. You can also create um, harmony and really nice neutrals. Can't tell which side I was painting on. There's paint on both sides of it. All right, so got a goodly amount of paint on there. And I've used up most of the paint on my palette. Let's see. I'm leaving this end blank. I'm pointing at it, it's not on camera. I'm leaving that blank because I want to um, glue a cover onto the top of that. And now I'm distracted because I've just noticed that I have paint on my Uh, paper here and my gloves and I'm touching the back side of the piece so I think I will stop with this and see if there's anything I need to quickly wash off of the back. I'll see you in the next installment.